Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing all right. On the 1st of February, just gone, I turned 25 years old and some of you might remember that previously I had set myself a little challenge to visit every EU country before I turned 25. Did I manage it? No. And I'll tell you for why, because there was quite a few reasons. So originally I'd started doing this because it was fun. It was pushing me to visit places that might not have otherwise been in the forefront of my mind. And each time I got back from another country, I'd come back with a slightly better geographical knowledge and a unique memory of a new place that usually I'd experienced with a friend. And it was great. My original goal was that I wanted to go to every single country in Europe before I turned 25, but I only properly decided to try and do this about 18 months before I turned 25. So I needed a way to narrow down the numbers, but still keep it as a definitive list. And I settled on EU. Now, firstly, I'd say I messed up by making that little announcement in spring and then I didn't go anywhere for about two three months because I didn't really have any money and then I went to Edinburgh to work the fringe for about two months and then I came back and it was winter which is the busy season of my job and well, then it was just the new year and I just hadn't really planned out my time properly which Oops. But with that being said, I still got a lot of what I wanted to out of it. I saw so many places that I might not have been to otherwise, and I have loads of memories from places that I made a connection to and might want to go back to one day. Countries that I did manage to visit were Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Malta, the Netherlands, Denmark, Ireland, the UK, Greece, Spain, Austria, Sweden, the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Poland, and Slovakia. And the places that I didn't manage to get to were Portugal, Cyprus, Luxembourg, Lithuania, Finland, Slovenia, Croatia, Bulgaria, and Romania. I almost went to Slovenia and Croatia last year, but Ro couldn't get the time off work, so it didn't work out. So I was having fun, I went to lots of places, but I started to kind of feel the pressure of the time restraint. As I mentioned when I sang Vienna with Alice, I kind of got to the stage where if I had a few days off work and I wanted to use them to go on a trip, I felt kind of like I was pressuring myself to go to more than one place. And if you're only going somewhere for a really short amount of time, there is no wiggle room for if the one day that you have there is pouring with rain, or if your flight's delayed and you don't get there as early as you think you will, or I don't know, like maybe you arrive on Labor Day, not knowing that that's a thing, and all the things you want to see, including the botanical gardens, is shut. These things happen. I was still really enjoying getting to see new places, but I was feeling like I was making myself not able to get the most out of it. And because my job is shift work and I'm on a zero hour contract and it's kind of seasonal, the shifts that I do have, I can't really afford to take off to give myself like an extra day to travel. I'm already pouring like more money than I can really afford to go to all these places. So basically at the start of this year, I decided that I was gonna give myself a one year extension. So money was a big thing. I find very affordable trips, but they still cost like, a hundred pounds and that is a lot of money to be spending that regularly. Two, as I said, I felt like I wasn't getting the most out of visiting these places. Three, I had quite a few friends who had seen what I was doing and thought it was really cool and had always wanted to go to certain places. So they got in contact and they were like, hey, hit me up if you're gonna go to any of these countries, I'd love to join you. And some of them were mates that I never get to spend like extended periods of time with. So it would be lovely to be able to have a little getaway with certain people that I'm not usually in regular contact with. And then on top of that, I had a bunch of friends who had either never been abroad before and would really like the opportunity to go. Some friends who had always wanted to go on trips like that but hadn't realised that it could be affordable for them. And some friends who had always wanted to go to so many places but had always just been a little bit nervous because they'd never done it before. And I saw a really nice opportunity to take people who otherwise might not have gone to places with me and have that experience with loads of different friends that I never would have expected to go on a holiday with. But when I'm not just working around like my schedule and the schedule of my workplace, obviously it's a little bit more complicated to organise. I wanted to go with these people but because my deadline was coming up, I was really tempted to just go on my own. But wh why? Why would I do that? The deadline isn't real. So that was another great reason for the extension. The money thing, I could be spending a lower percentage of my money on going to places. The opportunity to appreciate them more and the opportunity to go with people that if I rushed it, I wouldn't be able to go with. And then the fourth reason was maybe the most important, definitely the, the biggest reason, the shame. Obviously, I am one human and I'm not solely responsible for global warming, but I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that the amount of traveling I was doing was not excessive. Of course it's excessive and I'm aware of that. I have made an effort where possible to get trains and buses instead of flying all the time, but largely I was mainly flying and that is a huge carbon footprint that I am just slamming on the world. And the main reason for that is that in Europe you can get flights shockingly cheap, but you can't really get trains and buses for the same cost. It just doesn't happen. And the speed also. I don't know why European flights are that cheap, but it was quite hard to resist the temptation to make the most of it when I never thought that going to one of those places would be something within my price range, you know? Budget airlines have closed that gap. They've made it a much more viable option for people who don't make loads of money, but could put aside a bit of money to go on a trip somewhere. 
it is now possible. But the fact that I can afford it doesn't make it okay. And so, because I didn't have that many countries left, and after I completed this, I probably wouldn't go on any trips for a long, long while, I thought maybe I should just try and finish it with much more environmentally friendly travel options. So instead of just regularly looking for five pound flights, I was looking at the Eurostar, I was looking at coaches to continental Europe and beyond. But they are just way more expensive. Like on average, I'd say they're at least three to four times the price of what the return flight would be. And I'm not trying to sell that to you as a justification of why I'm gonna continue taking flights. I'm not. It's just that it meant that I wouldn't be able to afford to take those options within this restrictive time that I had. So therefore, reason number four for extending my little travel challenge another year was so that I could spread the trips that I was gonna do over a much longer period of time and therefore be able to afford much more environmentally friendly ways of traveling. And that was where I was at. That was the decision I had made and I was ready to share that with the world. And then, so there we are. We're paused for another couple of years. And hopefully one day, very, very far in the future, when life gets back to normal, maybe I'll be able to pick it up again. Until then, stay inside, everyone. Stay inside. The too long didn't read of this is just like, nope. Have a lovely day, everyone. Goodbye.